Hello, and thank you for joining me here at Take 5 with Vinay 5. Hey, that's me. Today, we are going to look at the Week in Review for TMI, Thought-Provoking, Motivational, and Inspirational Stories. I will also mix the current events with relevant historical events, hopefully to give you a broader perspective. Let's go. The elephant in the room is in the state of Georgia. The Election Integrity Act of 2021, signed by Governor Kemp of Georgia, is a 98-page bill. Let's look at five components of the bill to break it down for understanding. Changes to absentee voting. So 1.3 million people used that method in the November elections. Voters 65 and over, over, anybody with a disability, anybody in the military or overseas will still be able to apply once for a ballot. And they will receive a ballot automatically for the rest of the cycle. The earliest that voters can request a mail-in ballot is 11 weeks before an election instead of 180 days. The deadline to complete the application is going to be two Fridays before election day as opposed to the Friday before the election day as it was before. The thought on that is that it will cut down the number of ballots rejected for coming in late because of the tight turnaround. Counties will also begin mailing out absentee ballots about three weeks later than before. So it's going to start four weeks before the election. There are also new ID rules, a driver's license number, state ID number, or an acceptable voter ID will have to be included with the application. There will be an online request portal, and you can use one of those numbers ahead of the November election. This change is an addition to the recent signature verification. One thing you may remember receiving all of those um, absentee ballot applications and you never knew if it was official or not, there will be a penalty for third parties sending applications without saying that they are not associated with the government. In addition, you will not receive those third party ballots if you've already voted or there will be a penalty to the person or group that sent it to you. You also may have heard that the absentee ballots will be printed on security paper. I guess sort of like a watermark to completely verify that the ballot that you're receiving is from the government and is an official ballot. The runoffs will now be four weeks long instead of nine weeks. Now let's look at the absentee ballot boxes. The law now requires that all 159 counties in Georgia have at least one drop box with caps on the number of boxes at one per 100,000 active voters or one for every early voting site, whichever is smaller. It also moves them inside early voting sites instead of outside on government property. The drop boxes will also only be accessible during early voting days and hours instead of 24-7. Let's look at changes to early voting. One of the biggest changes will expand early voting access for most counties, adding an additional mandatory Saturday. So that will provide two Saturdays. And Sunday voting hours are optional. Counties can decide to provide two Sunday voting opportunities. They can, counties can decide to have the voting open as long as 7 to 7 or 9 to 5 at a, at a minimum. Polling place changes or closures are now required by law to have better notice of those changes, including
a four by four foot sign that shows where the new location is. Let's look at that handing out the water and food to people standing in line. The new law says that anyone except poll workers cannot hand out water to voters in line. They cannot pass out food within 150 feet of the building that serves as a poll, inside a polling place, or within 25 feet of any other voter standing in line. Let's talk about the state election board. We don't normally interact directly with the state election board, uh, but this, what it, what's happening here is the Secretary of State will no longer be the chair of the state election board. The new chair will be a nonpartisan, but appointed by a majority of the state house and senate. The chair would not be allowed to, you know, in the past been a candidate or have participated in a political party or organization or campaign or made campaign contributions for two years prior to being appointed. The law also says the governor should appoint someone if the position becomes vacant when lawmakers are not in session. Thank you for joining me here at Take 5 with Vinay 5. That's me. I learned something. I hope you did too. Be blessed.